Our padre were a solemn bloke. We called him Dismal Jim. It fairly gave yet blooming creeps to sit and hark at him. When he were on with Judgment Day about that great white throne, and how each chap would have to stand and answer on his own, and if he tried to chance his arm and hide a single sin, there'd be the angel Gabriel with books to do him in. He had it all ripped down, he said, and nothing could be hid. He had it all in black and white, and he would take no kid. And every single idle word a soldier chanced to say, he'd have it all thrown back at him in court on Judgment Day. Well, I kept minding Billy Briggs, a pal of mine, what died. He went to help our Sergeant Smith, but as he reached his side, there came a bust between his legs, a Bosch 5.9 pill, and I picked up his corporal stripes, and were all that were left of Bill. I called to mind a stinking night when we was carrying tea. We went round there by Limerick Lane, and Bill were ahead of me. To a raining heavens hard, you know, and boards were thick with muck, and umpteen times we slithered down and got the decks he stuck. Well, we got there down by the switch, and a loose board ticked right up, and Billy turned the somersault, and down he came and whop. I've heard men cuss, and I've heard men blind, and I've heard them do it hard. Well, haven't I heard our RSM inspecting special guard? But Billy left them standing still, he turned the black night blue, and I guess the angel Gabriel would have short them work to do. Well, how would poor Bill go on when he stood all alone, and had to hear that tale read out afore the great white throne? What our padre says is right, he'd have a rotten spell and finish up with it, I suppose he'd have to go to hell. And yet, he were a decent lad and he met a decent end. You'll never finish decenter than trying to help a friend. But somehow I can't think it's right, it ain't what God would do. This stunt with all these record books, I think it's all napu. Twould wreck some rotten beggars in and keep some good uns out. There's lots of blokes what does no wrong and as can do now, but shout. But t'other night I dreamed a dream, and just twixt you and me, I never dreamed like that afore, and I half thinks it were true. I dreamed I was dead, you see, at least as I had died, for I were very much alive out there on the other side. I couldn't see no judgment court, nor yet that great white throne. I couldn't see no record books, I seemed to stand alone. I seemed to stand alone beside a solemn kind of sea. Some waves they got in my inside, and they had touched my memory. And day by day, and year by year, my life came back to me. I see just what I were, and what I chanced to be. And all the good I might have done, and hadn't stopped to do, I see I'd made a hash of it, and called, but it were true. A throng of faces came and went before me on that shore, my wife, mother, kiddies, pals, and the face of the London Hall. And some were sweet, and some were sad, and some put me to shame for the dirty things I'd done to them when I hadn't played the game. Then in the silence someone stirred, like when a sick man groans, and a kind of shivering chill ran through the marrow of me bones. And there before me someone stood, just looking down at me, and still behind him moaned and moaned the everlasting sea. I couldn't speak, I felt as though he had me by the throat. Must be like a drowning fella feels last moment he's afloat. And he said now, he just stood still, for I don't know how long. It seemed to me like years and years, but time out there's all wrong. What was he like, you're asking now? Can't word it any way. He were him, that's all I knows. There's things as words can't say. It seemed to me as though his face were millions rolled in one. He never changed, yet always changed, like the sea beneath the sun. For all men's faces, yet no man's face, and a face no man can see. And it seemed to say in silent speech, You did them all to me. The dirty things you did to them, the filth you thought was fine. You did them all to me, it said, for all their souls were mine. All eyes was in his eyes, all eyes, my wife's and a million more, and once as I thought those two eyes were the eyes of the London Hall, and they were sad, my God, how sad, with tears what seemed to shine, and quivering bright with speech alight, they said, 
her soul were mine. And then at last he said one word. He just said one word. Well, and I said in a funny voice, please, can I go to hell? And he stood there and looked at me. And he seemed to kind of, he seemed to kind of grow till he shone like the sun above my head. And then he answered, no, that hell is for the blind and not for those that see. You know that you have earned it, lad, so you must follow me. Follow me on by paths of pain, seeking what you have seen, until at last you can build the is with the brick of might have been. That's what he said as I'm alive, and that dead dream were true. But what he meant, I don't quite know, though I knows what I have to do. It's got to follow what I have seen till this old carcass dies, for I daren't face in the land of grace the sorrow in those eyes. For there ain't no books and there ain't no thrones. It's him you've got to see. It's him, just him, what is the judge of blokes like you and me. And boys, I'd sooner frizz em up in the flames of burning hell than stand and look into his face and hear his voice say, Well,